And part of Hollywood's new image is attributed to a group of artists who have opened workshops and are changing the character of the aging district. It's having a nascence of some kind, and, and it's obvious that in another six months or a year, this is going to be a showpiece in Florida. I definitely see a revival happening. I see, I mean, you can talk to people on the street that are out here now that have lived here for years, and they're coming down for the first time in years, and they're just flipping out. They just can't believe it. Everyone is talking about the Renaissance in Hollywood. It was only a year ago that many of these storefronts stood empty. The sidewalks looked almost deserted, and business was at an all-time low. But then came an answer that would turn this small, forgotten city around. A creative solution. What a redevelopment effort try to achieve in a decade, a vibrant arts community is accomplishing in a matter of months. The Art and Culture Center I'm talking about is now... Hollywood's Mayor Mara Galanti always dreamed of developing an arts district here. She hopes culture can do for Hollywood what it has done for sections in New York, Miami, and San Francisco. It helped to identify uh, an image for us, uh, an upscale image, because artists, and I made this statement recently, whether, whether rich or poor, the artists themselves help to create that upscale image because it's a, uh, a cultural happening when they move in. A drive down Hollywood Boulevard is enough evidence to prove that this town is starting to tick. Outdoor cafes, upscale shops, and numerous galleries now lie in the downtown area. Artists are moving here from around the country. And good news is traveling fast, bringing in not only talented artists, but merchants and customers that pump money into the economy. Jeannie Katzamonoglu gave up her household chores to open a Greek restaurant here several months ago. So far, business is booming. They bring a lot of people down here. That's it. So if people coming down, we're busy too. Right? <laughs> In just eight months, more than two dozen businesses and art studios have opened. The attraction? Rents are affordable and the environment is friendly. Nan LaSalle and Ed Page share a studio on Harrison Street. Everybody's working together all the time, and you don't find that. I never have any place. I've never you know, seen it's like now everybody's working together, all the artists work together. If somebody doesn't have enough money, everybody chips in and gives them pain or whatever. That's how almost all this place has been built. Brian August sells his hand painted fabrics and accomplished artworks in what used to be a reupholstering shop. Down the street and around the corner stands Now Art, perhaps one of the district's most successful galleries. The old space, which was once a discount shoe store, is now home to nationally known artist James Morlock. If you look at other states and when their culture picked up with bringing art and music and dance to an area, it, it brought life to it. And I find that that's what it's doing to Hollywood, and Hollywood needs something like that right now. And it seems to be working. I see it right now happening, just being here four months. George Osborne, owner and keyboardist at George Osborne's Performing Salon, hopes to educate an eager community. His main objective is to offer concerts that will inspire his audiences into greater cultural awareness. I've seen an almost awakening of attention back to the arts. Now this particular place is performing arts, but it's amazing. Now, now that there's art to see, people are saying, well, you know, maybe I should go see some art. Where before they said, well, maybe I should go see some some uh, uh, network television, <laughs> and uh, ho hopefully we're giving them an alternative. Behind much of this excitement are two men that helped build the framework for success. Stan Slutsky and David Maxwell, accomplished artists in their own right, met six months ago after looking for a studio mate. They decided to put their work on hold in order to help other artists get a start in the community. Together they organized Community Revitalization Artists, a nonprofit group that not only provides gallery space, but guides grassroots artists into affordable studios. 
Our encouragement came from the influx of talent coming to the area, which encouraged us to encourage more artists in their works. And we're just involved with it so much that we don't know if we're the artists being encouraged or we're the artists encouraging other artists. Anyways, this is our artist incubator building, and these rooms off to the right-hand side are the special rooms for the artists at reduced rates, and this is why we call it... Recently, CRA opened a new studio space for fledgling artists called the incubator. Is these spaces here have sinks in them mm -hmm. that the artists can use in their own quadrant. With At only $200 a month, each artist has their own studio space, complete with electricity, running water, and most important, privacy. One of the things that's very hard for an artist to do is to complete a body of work, and the incubator provides the opportunity to get a whole body of work together and not be a dilettante or a weekend warrior with art because you can really be serious about it. And this is what I'm grateful to have the opportunity to do. There is often a cycle that exists within a successful arts community. Artists bring in affluence, yet it's that affluence that often drives up the rent and forces those artists to leave. The mayor of Hollywood insists that that won't be the case here. I'd like to ensure that a percentage of this street in Harrison will in the future be dedicated to artists. I do not want to see them upgrade the property, help create an image, and then because they can no longer afford the rents to be forced out. I think that we'll start the cycle all over again then. Twenty years down the road we'd be looking at decline again and looking for an image boost. Future plans are already in the works. An arts and cultural center will soon find a home here and a band shell will eventually be built in Young Circle. Although many critics are amazed at this rapid turnaround, Slutsky and Maxwell believe it was only a matter of time. And we're not taking credit like we did this. We're just saying that something hit us in the head and a lot of other people have come down here and put a lot of effort into it. And it was, this was a thing whose time has come. And uh, if it hadn't been a popular concept, we wouldn't have had close to a thousand people in our first show. The people from Hollywood are ready for this.